Good morning, church. It's such a privilege once again for us to bring God's word to you this morning. I'm so blessed this morning to share God's word with you too. I've been working on something in my life. I think all through my life I have been working on something. Now let me, before I can say anything more, now we are just doing a series in learning for living. Yeah? Amen. We did perseverance last month and uh, we did be willing to persevere. Persevering through disappointments. Damien shared a great message on that. Perseverance is the answer. There is no other way that you and I can get answers unless we persevere in the Lord. How to gain from your pain through perseverance. And I thought it was a fantastic message that Pastor Deshan shared last Sunday. I was so blessed with that wonderful testimony, how that lady persevered and how God has, you know, taken them from where they are and brought them to where they are now. So praise God for that. So perseverance is such a learning uh, that we have to have to, you know, understand if you're going to live this life in God, we have to learn for living. Amen. So for this month of November, under the series of Learning for Living, we will be talking on humility. Now, I must say, last Sunday we started the series uh, on Zoom, and I spoke on the importance of humility. You know, that's so important to know, the importance of humility. We shared from James chapter 4, verse 6, but he gives us more grace. Who? God gives us more grace. That is why scripture says, God opposes the proud, but shows favor to the humble. In James chapter 4, verse 10, Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord, and he shall lift you up. That is what we, that's what we shared last week about the importance of humility. So in the light of these two scriptures, we spoke about the importance of humility. As people of God, we understand that we live under grace. Amen. We are saved by grace. And we will continue to live this life with God by grace. James tells us that he gives more grace. It is not just the saving grace that God's talking about. But he's talking about grace for us to continue to live in the Lord. Amen. James tells us that this grace is given not to the proud. Oh, oh, but to the humble. God opposes or resists the proud, which means the proud must not think that they will receive anything from the Lord. See, friends, God doesn't bless the proud people. God blesses the humble people. That is what it means. If we are proud, the grace of God will not bring the blessings of God to you and me. And I have seen that in the lives of many people, even my own life. If I want, if I tend to be proud, you know, I, I block the blessings of God coming into my life. So pride has a great part to play in our lives. So let me encourage you. This, if there is one thing that you and I have to work in, in all our lives till we go to be with the Lord, is pride. So you know, when the devil fell, what happened to him was, he fell because of pride that was in his heart. And eventually he rebelled. When we fell uh, when man fell into sin, he took on the form of the, of the devil's nature. So that is why pride has a great part to play in our lives. That was the first thing that we also took on. So today's message is, how do we stay humble? Is that a wonderful topic? And I think we all want to know how to stay humble, don't we? I want to know how to stay humble. Something that I've been working on in my life, all through my life, is humility lives under God's mighty hand. Humility lives under God's mighty hand. 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 6 tells us, Humble yourselves, sorry, I'll read again. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, so that at the proper time He may exalt you. He talks here about humbling yourself, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, so that at the proper time, He may exalt you. So that doesn't say that God won't exalt us or He won't you know, glorify us. The Bible says that He does. But that is a prerequisite for us to be exalted and to be humbled, to be, to, be, to be glorified, if we will choose to humble ourselves. I know that everybody wants to be lifted up. We all want to be glorified. Maybe we, we, we wouldn't say so in our own conversation and in our lives. Maybe we don't feel it at all times. But part of the motivation for living according to the world system is to get exalted for ourselves. So this comes in getting the respect we feel we deserve. 
It comes by having the things we want. It comes or, or, or living in the comfort and pleasure we sometimes crave for. And God asks us to quit the world's way of pursuing those things. Instead, he calls us to trust him, to exalt us. When the time is right without trying to get that glory for ourselves, it requires real humility. We agree not to make our daily lives about ourselves. And God promises to make it about us when he sees fit. That's how Jesus lived his life on earth. And I believe that's exactly what God wants. In this verse of scripture it says, Humble yourselves therefore under the mighty hand of God, so that at the proper time he may exalt you. We must understand that God is sovereign, my friends, and he will do as he pleases. We must therefore submit our will and life totally to God's will for our lives. God may choose to do things differently to the way we expect in life, and we must therefore accept his ways and his timing in our lives at all times. Because he says here, he will exalt us at the proper time. So there is a time in God. God is, God is God at all times. He never ceases to be God in your life and in my life. He only does cease to be God when we don't choose to humble ourselves under his mighty hand. And that is true. Because God looks for humble people. So we need to make a decision if we are to stay humble. Ask yourself, is God the Lord of your life? Such an important thing. We can take God just to be only our Savior, take Jesus to be our Savior. But we don't simultaneously crown him the Lord of our lives. And his Lordship must not be compromised at any time or at all times. So these days people want to lecture God and tell him how it should be done and what should be done. Sometimes even in our prayers, the way we pray, we want God to do it our way. No, God just wants us to humble ourselves to him and he will do it his way. But God does not need our advice as to how to do things for us. He always, friends, he knows better. It doesn't matter what we go through, how we go through things. If we would choose to humble ourselves through all the situations we go through, God in due time will exalt us. Paul the Apostle was kept humble by God under his mighty hand by having a thorn in the flesh been given to him. The reason was because he had great revelations from God. And in order to keep him humble or from having actually a big head, the Bible says that he was given a thorn in his flesh. It was better for Paul to stay under the mighty hand of God and go through what he went through so that he can be kept humble. Paul knew that he can stay humble, which was important to him in God, by which God could work in his life for the furtherance of the gospel. Now, Paul had a reason. You know, he prayed thrice to the Lord and said, Lord, take this away. But God kept him. And Paul was prepared to stay under the mighty hand of God. Because he knew if he stays under the mighty hand of God, he will stay humble before God. Praise God. So stay under the mighty hand of God. Even if you don't feel comfortable, my friends, at times, and don't know what is going on in your life, Jesus will take good care of you and he'll take good care of me. And at the proper time, he will exalt you. Wait upon the Lord. Some of you are humbly waiting upon the Lord and God is doing a work of humility in your life as you are believing God for certain things to happen in your life. My friends, it will come to pass. You stay humble under the mighty hand of God and God will make, it, make all his grace abound towards you. So how do we stay humble? My second point is humility lives in our relationships with others, isn't it? Humility lives in our relationships with others. 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 5 tells us, Likewise, ye younger, submit yourselves unto the elder. Yea, all of you be subject one to another, and be clothed with humility. For God resists the proud and gives grace to the humble. This verse of scripture is so powerful to me. He says, you know, we need to, to, to humble ourselves to each other. 
We need to submit ourselves to each other. Humility is to be expressed always in our relationships. Even with God, our humility is, 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 is expressed, you know, to God. And, he, and our, our, our humility also is to be expressed with people, with, in relationships. We don't discover and stay humble on our own. Nobody can stay humble on their own. Humility is not found by us sitting at home and having lunch by ourselves. Or sitting in the car. Or it is always easy to be humble when there is no one around you, isn't it? But we are... We are, not, we, are not to, we are not going to be humble in a position like that. I remember the days when we were growing up and if the teacher or the principal would walk into the classroom, you know, because we were taught to respect and be humble, we would always stand up and acknowledge the person and show respect and humility towards that person. Why? Because we were taught this from our young days in relationships, in order to build relationships, in order to, to, to strengthen relationships, we need to humble ourselves. At times, sometimes when we were in buses going, you know, to school or wherever, you know, people, elderly, elderly people would get into the bus, whether it be males or females, whoever, or otherwise a woman carrying a child. You know, and if we are sitting in a, on a seat, we would always rise up and offer the seat because we have been taught to be humble. See, these are good values that have been taught to us by our parents. We may not see these values now, but the fact is, if you, if you, look, at the, if you look, at, look at the generations before, maybe, you know, the, 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 the older people, we find that they were very respectful and they were full of humility. We need to understand that, that God wants us, you know, in relationships to be humble. Peter in his book here is giving advice to the leaders of the church, not only to the people who were elderly, but for the elders of the church, how they should live their lives in submission and in humility. I am sure the young blokes of the church at that time had no respect and chose not to be humble before the elderly and the elders of the church. So when we think about it, it is, it is the mentality of a generation then and it appears to be the same today. Friends, we need to bring back humility in the lives of each and every one of us, especially when we live and work and have our, our beings with relationships. Very, very important. People address the need for the churches. Sorry, Peter addressed the need for the churches, especially in relationships, to stay humble and submitted to each other. This is a wonderful mark of discipleship. When God... You know, the Bible itself tells us that the world will know that we are his disciples because we love one another. Humility is a part of loving one another because without humility, you know, we, love cannot flow. But true love flows through true humility. 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 5 in the Passion Version says, In the same way, the younger ones should willingly support the leadership of the elders. The same passage I just read. In every relationship, each of you must wrap around yourself the apron, apron of a humble servant. You know, this is exactly what Jesus did when, when at, the, at, the, at, the, at the Lord's Supper, where he wrapped a towel around his waist, he humbled himself, and he washed the feet of his disciples. It's the same thing that Peter is telling us because Peter really experienced humility from Jesus. And he is demonstrating or he's telling the church, you know, in this letter, in the same way, the younger ones should willingly support the leadership of the elders. In every, in every relationship, each of you must wrap around yourself the apron, the apron of a humble servant because God resists you when you are proud, but multiplies grace and favor when you are humble. I want a multiplication of God's grace in my life. I'm sure you too want God to multiply his grace in your life. It's kind of exciting when you read this passage of scripture. The only requirement is, is to humble ourselves. If you want God to, 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 to multiply his grace over your life and my life, that we must humble ourselves in relationships. That is so important. 
I love you. And I endeavor to do my very, very best, you know, to live humbly before you. I'm not saying that I'm a humble man, but what I'm saying is it is a challenge and it is a requirement by the Lord that he has placed upon my life that I will humble myself before you. And God expects you too to humble yourself before him and before other relationships. I know the number of times when I have, to, when I have the attitude of pride in my own relationships with people. Can I say that we will never be able to say pride was something in the past of my life. <laughs> we could never say that pride is something that now we have, we have overcome. No, but you and I have always, always got to overcome the attitude of pride each day in our relationships with people. We always need to always submit to one another if we are to stay humble, church. You know, this is such a requirement for us. I, the, desire, the, the reason why I'm, I'm sharing this with you this morning is because I believe that God is going to do something amazing in our lives as a church. And he's teaching us how to, be, how to live our lives in such a way that he can allow his blessings to flow. You know, the Bible tells us where brethren dwell in unity, God commands a blessing over our lives. Why did he say that? Because for brethren to dwell in unity, the one of the most important thing is humility. And if we don't have that humility, then how could God command a blessing over us? So he's going to do an amazing thing in the days to come. He's going to command his blessings upon our lives because we chose to be humble to each other. Proverbs chapter 3 verse 34 tells us, Though he scoffs and the scoffers and scorns the scorners, yet he gives his grace. His undeserved, undeserved favor to the humble, those who give up self-importance. I'll tell you something, church. Sometimes self-importance gets in the way of humility. But God does not want self-importance to get in the way of humility. So how do we stay humble by giving up self-importance? No relationship can survive if there is no humility. No marriage can survive if there is no humility. Today we got many marriages that are breaking up and one of the reasons is because of lack of humility. Employers and employees falling out. Good friends are falling out. People of the church, it is all because of the lack of humility. Pride takes over. Pride can destroy good godly relationships in moments. And I have seen it happen. When pride arises, you know, it destroys the oneness, the, 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 the relationship, you know, the love. It, it, it just destroys them all. But if we choose to walk in humility, we build our relationships. Relationships grow stronger. Relationships become more and more loving. And we find that there is such oneness and strength. And if things go wrong in other areas, because of the humility of one another, relationships stay strong and permanent. The Lord never told us to act humble, church. But he said to each and every one of us, be humble. This can only be expressed in our day-to-day -day relationships with others. Therefore, stay humble. In your relationships. It's such an important thing for us. We must choose then therefore. You know to, to always. Remember Lord. I want to build my relationships. Let, and help me by your grace also. To live a humble life. Before you and before your people. And the third thing. How do we stay humble? Humility lives in the attitude. Of our mind church. Humility lives in the attitude of our mind. Philippians chapter 2, verses 5 to 8. Philippians chapter 2, verses 5 to 8. Let this mind be in you. Here, Paul the Apostle talking to the Philippian church is telling, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. This is the same mind that he's talking about that was also in Jesus Christ who being in the, f in the form of God, did not consider it a robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, 
taking the form of a bond servant and coming in the likeness of men and being found in the appearance as a man. Listen to what it says. He humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even the death of the cross. Two things here Paul is talking about. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. In other words, he wants us to imitate the mind of Christ. And what was it? He humbled himself. God has never asked us, as I said before, to, pr to, to pray to be humble. But he asked us to be humble like Jesus Christ was humble. It is important to the believer that this revelation to be humble is caught in our hearts. It is an attitude that God wants us to live with, church. You know, I have seen many quarrels. I have seen many, many families fight. And every family has its issues. But most of the time, I have found, is because someone refuses to be humble. Someone refuses to accept that humbly that he or he was wrong. Have you noticed that? You know, we don't want to accept that we are wrong. We don't want to humbly accept that we did the wrong thing. And the Bible tells us Jesus was not like that. He made himself of no reputation. Being God, being, being the creator of the world, he still humbled himself, made himself of no reputation and became a man. And he came down. Humility is not thinking less of ourselves, friends, but thinking of ourselves less. In other words, putting others always above ourselves. It's hard, isn't it? But this is what the Bible says that we should be doing. Jesus himself said he did not come to be served, but he came to serve others. He was giving rather than taking, responding rather than commanding. He had a great attitude of humility by not only thinking, by also acting very humbly at all times. Even though he was a great teacher, a miracle worker, and a great healer, he never thought of himself more highly than others. I hope you can believe that. Jesus never personally exalted himself. He always humbled himself before people. So how do we think of others in our life when we are with them? Do we think that we are better in some ways? Do we think that we are more gifted than others? Do we think that we are more blessed than others? Do we think that we are more special than others? Or do we think that we should show or give preferences to others above, the, by, above someone else? This way of thinking or attitude is not godly, or it's not even a humble one. We must stay humble in the attitude of our mind. Always remember, that pride belongs to your sinful nature. It's not pride belongs to the godly nature. Pride belongs to the sinful nature that we picked up when man fell and fell into sin. What came into man was the same nature that the devil had, and that nature was a sinful nature. Humility belongs to your godly nature. When man sinned, he took on the nature of the devil, pride. That is why he fell from heaven. But since we are now born again and Christ lives in us, we have the mind of Christ. And the mind of Christ is a humble one. And God wants us to live humbly before him, before others, and have an attitude of humility in our lives. Three simple things. Humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. Humble yourself in your relationships with others. And humility lives in the attitude of your mind. Church, I hope this message is a blessing to you and a challenge to you as much as it is for me. I really believe that I have to also make the choice to stay humble. And God is good. God God blesses those that are humble. So I really believe this morning that you can have more grace. God will lift you up. He will honor you. And he will exalt you. He will, he will give you victory over your enemies. He will exalt you even, uh, even in, over your enemies. 
and he will show you who he is because you humble yourself before him, before, your, before his people and having that attitude of humility in your life, God will take you to places that you can never go to by his grace. Amen. Let me pray with you this morning, church. I believe that this message is a, is a, is a challenge to us. But God wants us to humble ourselves and serve him in humility. Father, I thank you for everyone here today that's listening to this message. I know at times it's a challenge for all of us when we have to humble ourselves. But Father God, we thank you that it has great rewards. And Lord, that your blessings will always flow as we humble ourselves before you. And I pray this morning, Lord, if there be anyone here hearing this message, I pray, my Lord, that you will speak deeply into their hearts in the areas of having to humble themselves. And I pray for every need to be met in their lives, that grace will flow, blessings will flow, healing will flow. Oh, Lord, that, 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 that financial needs will be met this morning. Lord Jesus, I just proclaim your blessings upon your people this morning. And I pray, Lord, that you will take them from where they are and, Lord, guide and lead their lives to where you want them to go in you. And I give you all the thanks and the praise and the glory, Father, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. It shall be done. Amen. God bless you, church. Have a great week. We are on this morning on, on Zoom, this, on this evening again on Zoom, and I'm sure it will be a blessing to you. God bless you.